Well, hello, uh, I'm Rabu Unava, Dean of the Graduate School of Management at the University of California at Davis. I'm sitting here with uh, Christian Tilligren, who is from the Bioinnovation Institute in Denmark. And we are both on a high because we just finished a conference uh, at UC Davis organized by the Innovation Institute for Food and Health, uh, what I would say is a hidden jewel at uh, the UC Davis. Uh, we were talking about the future of food and uh, one of the most important uh, pieces of work that's being done in this area is also coming from Bioinnovation Institute. So we thought it would be a great idea to talk to Christian, who is coming from there, uh, to get to know more about BII and why we are partnering together uh, trying to do the things we're doing. So Christian, thank you very much for uh, you know, being here and uh, agreeing to talk, talk with us. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, what, what, what happened uh, on your pathway? from education to business to where you are today. Yeah, thank, and thank you so much for having me and, and what a fantastic facilities to, to be at here. Um, so a little bit uh, my my history and, and, and background. Um, I, I did a, a commercial education in, the, in Copenhagen Business School, um, but under the uh, master uh, program of technology management, mm -hmm. uh, which is where you, you sort of become three things, either a venture capitalist, uh, an entrepreneur, or you, you work in a, in a technology company. Um, so I, I dropped in to uh, one of the Novo companies called Novo Science, uh, which also has a present here in, in UC Davis. Um, and I dropped into the R&D department mm -hmm. as a commercial person, um, which was kind of interesting. Um, so part of my job there was to, to work together with scientists on the early stage front end of, of ideas. Uh, this is a time where, where especially sort of crowdsourcing and, and ideations were, were a hot topic in, in R&D uh, centers. Um, and I got a chance to travel to all the different global sites of, of Novo Science, including here, um, to work on, on both agriculture, uh, food tech, um, biofuels, which was a big area for, for Novo Science at that point, um, to China, where it was more on detergents and industrial uh, enzymes. Um, and I sort of slowly learned to collaborate with scientists and, uh, and really explore also the, the breadth of technologies that, that were available in, in, in the industrial uh, biotech age. Um, and always having an emphasis of like, why do we try to solve a problem? Who's willing to pay, pay for that solution into a problem? And often when you look at biology, tapping into some of these areas, it's of course you're up against petrochemicals or you're up against animal uh, farming or something where it's difficult to, to navigate as a, as a, as a biotech company. Um, I later joined uh, the part of, of Novozymes that was more exploratory around startups. Mm -hmm. So this is back in 2015, 16, where accelerators around the world uh, really sort of started to, mm -hmm. to, to pop up and you could see access to, to technology, especially fermentation technologies. Uh, were really coming out of age and, and a lot of startups were spinning out of, of many universities and especially here in, the, in, in California. Um, and then I, I sort of could see, okay, there is some interface here between these scientists that have entrepreneurial dreams, but there's missing something. There's missing the, the maybe the product market fit or, or at least what could potentially be you know, the go-to-market strategy for, for a new enzyme or for a new um, micro, uh, microbial solution. Um, I then joined the Novo Nordisk Foundation, which is the governing foundation of Novo Nordisk, the, the pharma company, Novo Symes, the, um, the industrial company, and Novo Holdings, which is a very large uh, venture fund, uh, evergreen fund uh, of, of, of the Novo Group. The foundation then made a, a sort of a study of saying, okay, so a lot of the money that is being poured into research grants and, and research centers, what, actually, what is actually being translated into products and startups and, and actually getting out of the university and, and actually making it into the world. And, and this, this, the analysis came out that there was missing something. There was missing this coverage of, or bridge, you could say, of, uh, of the value of death of, mm -hmm. of a classical scientific company. And, and that sort of was boiling down to, to four things. It was the funding, so not a lot of translational funding was here. You had the venture capitalist at sort of at one end and, and sort of the academic grants at one, but no one was really taking care of that intersection that, you know, where you really want to do the, the, the killer experiments and, and critical experiments uh, to get funded in, in a commercial uh, avenue. Um, the other thing was, was, of course, knowledge. So 
bringing your especially commercial competencies together with with uh, with the scientific uh, co um, teams there was not really there wasn't really a place for, for doing so 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 this thing about creating a platform for that was was definitely one of the most important parts uh, infrastructure having access to to laboratories if you spin if you ever try to spin out a company of a university where do you go yeah. uh, you need do you need to build everything yourself um, and then, of course, the, the last part was, of course, the network. So, so could BI leverage uh, our international connections, uh, key opinion leaders in, in specific areas? If you think you have a company, I'm sure there's someone around the world who would know maybe even more or maybe know something around the area, but with a different uh, perspective. So those four elements we try to materialize into what today is, is called the BioInnovation Institute. And we fund uh, a lot of companies, they, they live with us, uh, we bring uh, our network and, and we use our knowledge in, in our team to, to get, them, get them funded. And so far we have created um, around 115 companies um, and started working across the globe as well with, with different universities. And, and this is where, of course, Hughes Davis uh, has been and will be a, a critical point for us to, to, especially on the food and health uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. So that was a short, <laughs> relatively short introduction to, to where I am and, and who I am. Uh, it's wonderful, it's fascinating. In fact, uh, this is also an interesting change that's happening all over the world. Business schools and uh, universities in general are recognizing that a lot of the IP that's being generated is going waste. Mm. That conversion from a patent into some commercial opportunity is just not happening. Mm -hmm at a rate at which it makes sense. Um, given that there are some very powerful accelerators like yours developing and giving a chance for the translation to happen because all of them are good for this world. So it's fantastic that uh, you guys are doing what you're doing Thank you. and, and we are very, very excited about partnering with you. So I'm just curious, uh, I'm sure that you're working with the IIFH on the food side of this. And of course, we are working with IIFH as well. I'm, I'm curious, what kinds of strengths are you seeing at UC Davis? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good point. Of, of course, um, working with, with that group, of course, it makes makes sense from especially a strategic point of view. But digging into the competencies of UC Davis, as I mentioned, uh, Novozymes, of course, have had mm -hmm. uh, or have a site here. Uh, and the reason they have that is is because of the agricultural strength mm -hmm. of, of UC Davis. And, and no doubt that we are based here in, in a bit of a sort of a, uh, of a intersection where you go from crop soil to specific crops and, 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 and understanding the, 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 you could say, the, the, the climate change impact on different crops is, is very much well mm -hmm. researched here and well documented. And then you move into the more sort of creation of actually whole products. So, you know, having access to brewery, winery, uh, that intersection of sensory panels meets the, 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 um, the actual raw materials that goes into these things. You, I haven't seen many areas where you have all of that connected on one campus. So I think the intersection and, and, and clearly the collaborations between some of these, uh, you know, everything from the plant biology side to the actual product side and, and what I really find interesting and where I can see a lot of benefits here is, is the deep-rooted connections with the food companies. Mm -hmm. So often you would see a, maybe a detached system where you would have like the academic parts researching you know, one way, making their own thesis about what, what needs to happen, and then you have the industry making their own choices. And, and if you don't have some interfaces, some, some not only corporate initiatives, but actually having that intersection where you have the scientists that actually are trying to solve a problem that we already know exist out in the industry mm -hmm. and that communications and those firewalls can only be be brought down if you work on a on a place like like Davis that actually accommodates those things Great. and seeing also testing in real life settings so it's not only theoretical right. but actually uh, physical uh, products that are being made mm -hmm. and and we are equally excited about the same ideas that you have been talking about because the Graduate School of Management has been working with the Institute for Innovation in Food and Health, and our students have been generating white papers working with IIFH scientists and are leading the way uh, in launching new products. So the day is not very far off when we will be talking about the GSM being 
part of the launch of several products that people might be seeing out there in supermarkets. And, and that excites us because that kind of entrepreneurship would not have been possible in the old model. Mm. But with the kinds of things that you're talking about, we would be able to do a lot more things like that. Translating the wonderful scientific knowledge that's being produced here for the benefit of uh, humankind. Mm. So that's what we're most excited about. So going back to your uh, own uh, work in the Bio Innovation Institute, uh, tell us a little bit about a couple of success stories. Yeah. So um, of course, it's uh, it's early stage innovation we deal with. So so I mean, success stories will initially be when when products, of course, hit the markets. Mm -hmm. It's when you, you clearly can see on a life cycle analysis that you actually made that you know, environmental impact that you wanted. Um, I think from, from a you know, startup creation side, and, and, and if I should talk about pro, uh, successes in that regard, um, we have one company I, I would like to uh, highlight, which is called Ebodia Bio. Mm -hmm. It's a company that uh, came out of uh, the Copenhagen University. Uh, they have engineered a, um, a yeast strain to produce specific aroma compounds, terpenes. Um, and in, in, in what, what they're trying to do is basically figure out, can we actually do a scalable model where we can actually produce aroma compounds that will be very true to nature, mm -hmm. but without, of course, the, the, the extraction of, of, um, of, of plant material. And I think that company is, uh, not only are they succeeding, but if, you th if, what, if I really should sort of point to the success in that company, is the, the technology is amazing, they, they got published in Nature, so you know, high level success on that, that's not, I have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. But I think what BI helped them with was to figure out what problem are they actually solving out in the industry. So their beachhead market and where they, they, they will go first is the non-alcoholic beverage market. Uh, non-alcoholic beer beverage market, uh, and I, I don't know if you drink non-alcoholic beers, but there's there's not a lot of good, uh, not a lot of good non-alcoholic beers, at least from the aroma mm -hmm. and hop point of view. Um, so it was an easy market to to maybe get because there was a desired need from the large brewers, mm -hmm. um, and it works and it, it looks like that they're hitting exactly the right notes in, in that regard. But where the true success will, of course, hopefully, we'll see is actually if they could go in and replace full hops in some of the large brewing companies. So, of course, back to the agricultural mm -hmm. chain, um, drought, um, salinity in soil is, of course, impacting a lot, especially on, on, on how we grow hops, which needs very specific conditions. And if we could work with biotech combined with, the, with hops, this company could maybe replace 40% of the hops. That would, of course, be interesting uh, if you if you're true to to what what the sensory uh, parts of it uh, is. But imagine having a stability in supply chain mm -hmm. for some of these things, and then hopefully this company could grow into to another uh, to a lot of other other things. Mm -hmm. Maybe one comment on on another part of that company is that it was three academic founders, um, an associate professor, and two postdocs. Who, who launched the company into BI, and then we, we helped them find a commercial CEO. And I think what I really see in, in that team dynamic is what makes these companies succeed, because there's a true respect from the commercial angles mm -hmm. to the scientific angle. They, they work well together, but they also respect each other's mm -hmm. competencies. And as you know, and I'm, you probably also work with here, is of course, business also carries out experiments. Mm -hmm. Business also carries out you know, a thesis that, you know, this might work if, mm -hmm. if these variables actually make sense. If not, we'll do it over again and we pivot. But similar to what, we do, what you do in science, you, you, put a, you, you create an experiment, see if it works out. If it works, replicate it, scale it. Mm -hmm. so, so it's the same in, in, in business. And, and that's what I think this company uh, really did and, and it illustrates a lot what we can bring. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they got, uh, we, we helped them get funded uh, out of BI afterwards with, mm -hmm. with venture capital. Wonderful. Wonderful. That concept of uh, business students or business executives working with scientists and having respect for each other for what they bring to the table was actually the main reason why we launched something called the industry immersions in our mm -hmm. MBA program. Uh, these industry immersions have students uh, sitting in a class, not just MBAs, but uh, PhD students from other parts of the university, and trying to solve real problems mm. that are being posed by executives. 
and, and they work together in teams. And it's very interesting because the first week they are trying to figure out who this person is and what's she talking about or what's she talking about. <laughs> and then by the 10th week when they're done with the quarter, they're having happy hours by themselves, they enjoy each other, they help each other out. So it's just uh, one of those barriers that uh, if it's broken, it's, it's a lot of good stuff happens. Yeah, 100%. You can also see if it if it is not broken down, you can clearly see a disalignment and and not coming to terms of, of what right. the actually strategy or vision is for the company, right? right. So that's extremely critical. We, we call it the dynamic duo. So having you know someone that, that also where you work with a, a two two sort of two edged sword, right? You have someone who's extremely sharp on the technology and, and can problem solve when you move up in, in, in your development, but also having a, a business person that is also adaptable and understand, mm -hmm. okay, this technology area or this technology issue would impact the business case so so. How do we mitigate That's it? Right. So um, very much so, and I think bringing them in front of, of industry leaders uh, to, to, to solve real problems is the only way to actually educate that because mm -hmm. it's, it's tough to just rate with good case examples. You need to, right. you need to do it yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and the, the beauty is that as these conferences happen, I was just talking to somebody at the conference and they were telling me that they are about to offer an internship to one of our students. The fact that our students are able to come to these conferences, mm. which are right here on campus, meet with these executives who are senior executives in these companies, and ultimately generate opportunities like uh, jobs or, yeah. or internships is just fantastic. Yeah. But that, and that's just a kudos also to the companies leaning in and, and opening the doors yes, uh, yeah. for, for these things, that's absolutely right. for sure. And, and so you are uh, coming from Copenhagen Business School, which is regarded as one of the best business schools in the world. And then we have students coming from our Graduate School of Management as well, which is highly regarded as one of the schools. And we focus on food uh, and ag agriculture and a couple other things. For somebody interested in food or the industry of agriculture and food, what would you say based on what you have seen on campus to that prospect out there that they should consider UC Davis seriously? Why, why would you make an argument that this is a good place to come to? So I think it's it's rare you see uh, actually a management school based in the heart of of, uh, of an agricultural mm -hmm. food. I mean we don't we don't have that in in Denmark. Uh, I don't see a lot of places that have that. So I think having uh, basically the proximity of of the knowledge, but also the actual physical mm -hmm. parts, mm -hmm. really really close by. Having that human interaction that you actually can interact with people without you know traveling to another campus or traveling to a completely other university mm -hmm. is phenomenal so that's where you will have you what i can see davis is, is good at is, is really this sort of cross fertilization mm -hmm. um, and and also i think the the different events that that you bring in people from all different angles it's mm -hmm. we're not just in the same room with all people that agree on everything mm -hmm. you actually invite for debates you invite for opinions where you, that's actually where a lot of the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's rare you see that openness to other people's opinion and, and discussion. So so I think that's that's one of the, for sure, for the future prospects, mm -hmm. a, a very, very good thing. And then I think also the location here, mm -hmm. you're very close to, to actually real life farms. You actually, you're close to to all the different, uh, for example, the the, the, uh, the wine yards and, and, and where industry's actually legacy history mm -hmm. is actually being made. And, yes. and of course, if we need to change the agricultural system for the better, we need to get, of course, converts and help with the existing infrastructure. And what better place to be in actually mm -hmm. having go f directly from a lab into some into yes. an actual industry setting where you could say you're not going to develop theses that are completely theoretical without actually being able to see how it actually fits into the real world, uh, mm -hmm. real world um, situations and, and environments. And I think that's, again, very critical for innovations to happen, but also it's a brilliant alignment and, 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 and tool to, to actually um, yeah, get people sort of excited about you can actually see your technology come to life relatively fast. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like lab, lab to field is really fast here. That's great. And so as you continue this work, uh, I mean, I was uh, fortunate to have met you more than once because you've been visiting us 
and I'm sure you'll be visiting us more. Yeah. What are a couple of things that you're excited about to this partnership? Yeah, so, so I think the, the collaboration here would, would, I think I'm excited about a couple of things. I think the whole thing about exchanging fellows and uh, making sure that we have, you know, people from, from UC Davis coming, seeding, uh, seeding them into some of our companies, learning from, you know, how does, uh, how does a company, a startup uh, doing in, in Scandinavia and, and, and vice versa. Uh, I think that, that's, of course, I think that just helps build talent, critical mass. And again, the, the reason we are here and the reason I've also been visiting here is because you also have some incredible interesting science mm -hmm. that we can fuel into companies, mm -hmm. uh, no doubt about it. Uh, and that's, of course, what the extension of, of our collaborate, collaboration is, is really focused on is how can we leverage the things I mentioned in the beginning, our network, our funding, our infrastructure, as, as well as the knowledge that, that we have if you combine that with some of the research that are in, in some of the labs here, mm -hmm. what, how, what, what strong companies could we build that will be sort of cross-Atlantic but have a global impact? That's true. And I'm, I was excited as I was listening to people at the conference today. All of them were talking about the same things. How do we feed this world? How do we feed them more efficiently? How do we make sure that we give the right nutrition to everybody? Mm. Because people are entitled to eat good food yeah. and they're entitled to good health. Yeah. And that seems to be the spirit of, of course, Denmark mm. and the spirit of uh, what we have here at UC Davis. I'm very excited about the next few years. Me too. And I'm looking forward to working with you and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing our students working with you as yeah. well. Me too. So Christian, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank it's you for inviting me and, and well, I'll be definitely back very soon. So Absolutely. Don't worry about <laughs> forward to your visit and then our students would be happy to sort of see you and talk to you as well and learn from you. Fantastic. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you everybody. This was uh, Christian Tilligren from uh, Denmark, a country of only 5 million people I think. 5.5. Uh, punches <laughs> about its weight in terms of innovations but you can see the reason why those innovations happen in a country like Denmark but we're very fortunate that our students will have opportunities where they can talk to people like Christian and learn more about innovation and participate in the process.